Hi everyone, welcome to our second episode here with Coffee with Call Tower. I'm Madison Donor, and today we have a really exciting guest with us, Stephen Hackett from 186 Cloud, all the way across the pond in Europe, is joining us. How are you doing, Stephen? Hey, Madison, I'm very good, thank you, and I'm really, really privileged and honored to be a guest on your show. Thank you. We're so excited. You know, this is something new for us, and you're only our second guest. We're so excited to use this platform in a different way and really use this to talk about our growth, our international expansion. So, just to get started, can you tell us a little bit about your connection to um, Call Tower and how we're partnering with 186 Cloud, just to give our partner community a little update? Yeah, sure. So happy to do that. So interesting that I'm your second guest, but I'm your first international guest, right? Um, and so, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so 186 Cloud, we're um, in in, in Newspeak. We're a technology services distributor. Uh, you know, but we're we're different to the other TSDs out in the market. Uh, so I'm I'm the director. I'm the CEO of the company. I found the company back in 2020. We've been around four years this August. Um, but as I say, we're different to the other TSDs out there because we offer a coaching mentoring program. So we teach a lot of our partners how to be successful in the technologies. You know, not just to not just to throw them over the wall to the vendors, but to actually how to work with the vendors side by side in opening up the opportunity and how to, you know, build their relationship and their, and I guess, their currency with their customer in becoming their customer strategic consultant around all things technology. Yes, and I think, you know, when I joined the team back in 20, October of 2022, what you were one of the first and only really international contacts I had and you know joining the team it was very clear we wanted to grow internationally um so I took that step by reaching out to you and I loved you know exactly what you just said the mentoring you know telling the partner community helping them grow it's really all about that and that was really exciting and you know we kind of just continue meetings from there on out and we're super excited to you know have have you on board have your team um you know just do continue growth in the UK together. And we're really excited to see the successes um, in 2024. So just like, you know, we want to grow in the UK, in EMEA in 2024, the UCAS and CCAS industry is already growing. I mean, it is a thriving industry right now, record numbers um, for revenue. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what you guys are seeing over in um, in your region? Yeah. Um... Yeah, you know, we've we partner with many use UCAS and CCAS vendors. You know, our whole strategy is around making sure we have the market leaders in our wheelhouse, right? You know, so, so in our ecosystem, we have every leading vendor that is got is got a magic quadrant, IDC, Forrester, analysts recognize, right? And call tower clearly play in that field. And that's why you're in there. But what, what all of that does is it enables us to help our partners be that strategic communications consultant to their customer. And we're seeing a changing marketplace right now because, you know, it's the, the 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 industry has gone through quite a transformation over the last few years. You see unified communications in the cloud, contact center in the cloud, landed on our shores here probably back 2014, 15, and started to grow in 16. Um, and so the last few years have seen a lot of those first businesses that want to move from on-prem into the cloud actually buy their cloud technology. Um, and then we've got this thing going on in the UK market right now that's happening next year. It's called ISDN switch off. So the incumbent network provider OpenReach are actually switching off their legacy technology that a lot of these on-premise technologies depend on. Um, we thought, interestingly, we thought that, you know, it made the assumption that a lot of businesses had made that change. So we made the assumption that the industry made the assumption that what we we're going to be looking at was the second iteration of customers who wanted their network next cloud experience looking for a new vendor but but a study that uh, we we discovered late last year that looked at the customers still on in the market that haven't moved suggested that upwards of 50 percent of customers in the uk market still haven't moved from on-prem to cloud so we see a massive opportunity in this last year there could be a bit of a you know last minute rush but we see a massive opportunity for taking those customers who are still on prem into the cloud and that's what we're going to be focusing on wow and you said 50% because i i was thinking you know while you were just speaking a little bit to that 
was I worked in um, London. I did an uh, internship when I studied abroad for about three months in 2017. And the big thing um, was the work environment there was being in the office, you know, the camaraderie together, the social aspect. Um, why do you think, you know, you said 50% haven't committed to cloud communication yet. Why do you think that is and how do we get them there? Yes, that's a really good question. Um, I think primarily it's been driven or the, the the pause in the move has been driven by the pandemic because we had this we had this year where organizations were sending people home overnight and the, and, and the organizations because they weren't prepared for this were essentially saying to their employees just use whatever tech you have to communicate with each other and your customers and so largely people working from home were, if they had time to divert their handsets in the office to the mobile, they did so, or somebody went and did it for them whilst they, whilst they weren't there. So they were getting calls diverted to their mobiles, and they existed for a year using emails and mobiles, so getting calls to the mobiles, making calls from their mobiles. A year later, when they were when they were allowed back into the offices, they kind of just made the assumption, you know what, that tech lasted for the, for the last year, so actually we don't really need a new telephone system or a cloud-based telephone system, we're okay. What they didn't appreciate was the damage it did to their customer experience, and that would take time to come out. So, for example, you know, imagine being a customer calling to speak to, you know, your regular account manager within a business, um, and the receptionist puts you through to their DDI, and that gets forwarded to their mobile at home. Only they then have another question. They actually need to speak to somebody else. Well, that's the end of the of the call trail. The person mm -hmm. at home can no longer put you through to another colleague in the office. What they have to do is send an email. And we all know we're all overrun by email. So that email ends up in a queue of 100, 150 emails in somebody's inbox. Eventually, they get back to you. In the meantime, what are you going to do? You're probably going to take your money elsewhere. So, so a, a, a poor voice communications experience is damaging customer experience. And I think that you know now that we're out of that and now that we've got things like ISD and switch off coming, businesses are finally starting to wake up to the fact that not only do we need to move because of open reach switching the network off, and also our on-prem technology becoming end of life. And but now that organizations are waking up to the fact that CX is very important, they're going to start to realize that they need to have a new strategic communications choice. Absolutely. And I think, you know, that's where kind of call tower can put their foot in there. We're bringing a Microsoft Teams Operator Connect um, to the UK that is on our roadmap. How um, how beneficial do you think that will be to our partnership together to, you know, the partners that you work with? Well, how do you see this going? I, I say it pivot as being pivotal. You know, if you you imagine that, um, you know, when you're having that conversation with a customer, if you're, a, you're, you know, when you're one of our partners, you're having a conversation with that customer, sort of, and you're taking them through through what I've just explained. I I know Mr. and Mrs. Customer what you've just been through. Um, the the customers, a lot of customers will say, yeah, we don't really need telephony, or yeah, we do, but our problem is we've got Teams, and Teams works for us, and so. We are now in a position because of the call tower relationship to say, well, don't worry, we've got you covered. You know, let's look at using your team's environment um, and enabling that for telephony, because what we can do is we can bring you connectivity into your in, into Microsoft Teams uh, environment for telephony using the call tower relationship. So it's an easy on ramp into cloud based communications because they've already been using Teams for the last four years because they adopted it during the pandemic. Exactly. And our, you know, our white glove implementation, our migration crawl, walk, run migration will be great because, you know, we can make it happen quick and seamless. And we have so many integrations. Speaking of integrations, AI Copilot Mike with Microsoft Teams is coming out and it's going to be on everyone's hands soon. We're already, you know, people are trying to find out, you know, how they could add that licensing. I know the UK, you know, I mean, a little bit different when it comes to security um, standpoint and things like that. What will AI look like over there when it comes to Microsoft Teams and Copilot? You know, will partners be able to get that? Um, do you have any insight on, you know, some concerns from some folks about AI? Yeah, um, last year was was, you know, it, it, it was a massive year in terms of AI because I remember a year ago, um, the chat GPT wasn't in anybody's mouths, right? You know, yeah. so last quarter, 2023, people started to talk about this chat GPT thing. 2023, um, so 2022, people started talking about it. 2023, people started to ask the question, how can I use AI in my business? 
Um, and so we started challenging our contact center vendors in terms of you know, asking them what AI meant in their business. And, and I wasn't really seeing the, you know, we weren't really seeing the, 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 the incorporation of AI into a value proposition that, that enabled organizations to use the technology within the contact center and their, their, their use environment that enables them to look at, say, can AI help me make money, save money, become more efficient? Because that's really what we look to do in business, right? But I think the thing with, with AI is the organizations that will win with AI are those who can do that, who actually start to say, actually, if I've got AI, if I've got a large language model here and I've got my core application here, how can I use AI to drive efficiency within the applications that I want to integrate together? You know, we, we, within our business, we are already doing that. So one of the things we do is, you know, we use um, transcription um, uh, technology within our meetings and that transcription technology at the end of the meeting will actually go to chat gpt it will create a, a summary and an action list from from the meeting it will drop it into our crm and it will even create the email that it will send to us to actually then send on to the participants in the meeting so we're using ai to be more efficient so if we had a half an hour meeting um in the past we'd have to spend another half an hour doing all the notes the crm doing the email action now items, it, take, yeah. it takes a minute so we're becoming more efficient. So I think that organizations that look at AI, AI and say, how can we do that? Will be able to use it successfully. And um, you know, and, and Microsoft's large language model, in addition to large language models like ChatGPT, are going to be equally important. And are you hearing from organizations or chatter, you know, in the around the industry um over in the UK about security issues? Um, you know, are some organizations, you know, a little bit weary about AI because of the security? Because I do know, you know, with AI, you could ask it some questions and it could go digging. Um, so you know, what are um some security issues that um your partners or the community out there might be worried about? Yeah, that that's that's probably the most common concern, right? Yeah. That you know, you've the the old way of addressing customers who wanted to use self serve was to use structured data that you'd put in a directory and say that data over there is available to the chatbot. Um, and it was it was kind of it was a bit analog in its approach, and that's the problem with those types of chatbots. You know, it's it's very specific. It's, it's very specific. You have kind of like a, an answer that, that it can be used for many situations and customers. It didn't really work for customers. The value of AI is it will look inside your organization's data and it will and it will try to bespoke the, the answer for the question. The concern by customers is where will it look? So already the, the, the good news is already we have a, again in our wheelhouse um, technology vendors who can look inside an organization's data and say, right, let's work out what's structured, let's work out what's unstructured, let's analyze the unstructured data and create a roadmap for data that's available to the large language model. So the answers are there. Um, I think c customers are just concerned right now because it's so new. So new, but I think AI will really change the productivity, um, not only in our industry, but just organizations in so many different verticals, healthcare, school, you know, business, finance, um, it's really going to be interesting to see, you know, the difference that it makes in everyone's everyday, everyday lives. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for joining me today. And we're so happy our first international guest, our, our, our first guest, second guest overall in our episode. So thank you so much for joining us and all our listeners. You can find this episode on YouTube, Instagram, Spotify. Be sure to subscribe to us and tune in for our next episode. Thanks so much for joining.